Hello friends, welcome to Inside Cycle Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about hydrogen cell ferry. So this hydrogen fuel cell ferry, so regarding this, first we will try to understand the video components. Later, we will discuss about more details regarding the hydrogen fuel cell ferry. You already know that government of India is encouraging the clean hydrogen okay, and a green hydrogen as well. So green hydrogen is a form of clean hydrogen where we won't use any carbon related energy input okay hydrogen of course it will be available in different forms green hydrogen brown hydrogen black hydrogen like in so many ways now so this clean hydrogen clean green hydrogen as a part of that so now we are going to discuss about hydrogen fuel cell ferry ferry is obviously a type of ship in this they use the hydrogen fuel cell hydrogen fuel cell is a very clean form of energy without any noise and without any pollution Regarding this, these are the video components. First, we will try to understand the context of this topic. Then, what are the features of this ferry? That means, who developed this one and who manufactured this one and who are the participatory organizations in this research? Then, we will discuss about the Harit Nauka Initiative. This initiative is about encouraging sustainable energy in inland shipping. Next, hydrogen fuel cell. What are, what are hydrogen fuel cell and how this hydrogen fuel cell will work. Next, limitations in India. What are the limitations and so far, what are the steps taken by India? Now, so whether we are talking about hydrogen cell or rooftop solar energy, all these are all about reducing this, you know, like dependence on fossil fuel energy and reducing the carbon, carbon emissions. You know, India trying to reach net carbon zero levels by which year? Comment your answer. India try to reach net carbon zero levels, okay, net zero carbon levels by which year, okay. Now, let us see. This particular topic is related to environment, energy resources and the context of this video is a Prime Minister virtually launched India's first indigenously developed, that means developed within India, hydrogen fuel ferry in Kochi, place is also very important, Kochi. Prime Minister inaugurated this virtually, okay. Next, this vessel manufacture you have to be very clear that manufacturer is different from the you know like developing organization developing organization they put their energy in the development of their particular technology whereas the manufacturing one is the idea will be converted into product okay this hydrogen fuel cell ferry manufactured by cochin shipyard limited and the, it is deployed at varanasi in uttar pradesh developed by developed by actually this First, it launched at Kochi, but it is going to be deployed for services at Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh. Okay, for pilgrims who comes to Varanasi, developed by this hydrogen fuel cell system. It is developed by KPIT Technologies Pune in collaboration with Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Labs under the Union Ministry of Science and Technology. The Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways they are bearing around 75 percentage of the project cost. Okay, and rest of the cost has to be, you know, like uh, has to be borne by the respective these developers. Let us see features of this ferry. It can carry around 50 people in air conditioner passenger area and it use hydrogen cell fuels. Okay, hydrogen fuel cell. It is don't, it is not using the conventional, you know, like uh, conventional batteries. Conventional batteries actually depend on the chemical energy and uh, once these batteries are drained out, you have to change the battery. So, like normally how you will change in the watch or you know like any um, mobile or whatever it may be. So, but here this hydrogen fuel cells, they do not use the conventional batteries. They mainly use hydrogen fuel as a source of energy and how this works, the mechanism of this battery, how it works, I will explain very soon. And this vessel is also fitted with the 3 kilowatt solar panel as well. That means the solar panel can cater the other needs of the particular ferry type of cells used in this vessel. This vessel uses 50 kilowatt PEM proton exchange membrane fuel cell, the name of the cell, very important in examination point of view, lithium ion phosphate battery. Tell me students, which countries are popularly known as lithium triangle, lithium triangle, which countries popularly known as lithium triangle, put your answer in the comment section. The advantage is that these cells can quickly change their output based on the requirement. That means normally, for example, if you keep battery in your watch, the battery supplies constant energy, whether you are using that watch or not, or irrespective of that. 
but these batteries if the you know like if the ferry require you know like additional thrust the for additional thrust the the battery will give more energy compared to when the ferry is cruising at very constant speed so they can change the output depends on the need and these cells are very popular in automotive applications because they can work even at very low temperature and they will add very light weight as well so that the overall weight of the vehicle also can be reduced that is the reason students if you observe compared to conventional uh, you know like conventional integrated circuit circuit based you know like petrol and diesel engine cars compared to that this electric vehicles okay they are little bit lighter compared to the conventional one and of course these are environment friendly one zero emissions zero noise and they are energy efficient and other benefits are this this kind of advantage this kind of ferry services it will give early advantage to countries like india and india can emerge as a leader in terms of green fuel in the marine sector as well next harit nauka green boat initiative this is initiative of ministry of ports shipping and waterways and this main objective of this program is you know to transfer to transfer the inland vessels inland vessels in a more sustainable manner in 2024 shipping ministry they unveiled harit nauka guidelines according to guidelines all the states they have to make efforts to use green fuel green fuel for at least 50 percentage of their inland waterways for the passenger fleets in the next one decade and 100 percentage by 2045 that means in the inland waterways if you use this kind of green energy source the pollution level be, will be very less so the marine life also will not be affected and the pristine condition near that ocean or near the lake that can be preserved that is the main idea so this main main objective is to reduce the greenhouse emissions as per the maritime amritkal vision 2047 you know that india is aiming towards the amritkal that is 100 years of anniversary okay by 2047 this also boost india's green hydrogen mission as well how this hydrogen fuel cell works this hydrogen fuel cell works based on mainly it consists of cathode cathode and anode they are separated by membrane hydrogen will be fueled and oxygen will be given reaction it produces the electricity i mean energy and the by products are water as well as the heat water as well as heat so here no carbon is producing in fact if you take the green hydrogen that is the next advanced technology in green hydrogen okay you will give solar energy and the solar energy gives adequate i mean required energy for the electrolysis of water and this water will produce this energy okay that electrolysis of water will produce hydrogen and hydrogen can be used as a energy source okay india is aiming for that one as well we will discuss about that very soon this hydrogen fuel cell this hydrogen fuel cell they use the chemical energy of hydrogen to produce the electricity and this is the clean form of energy heat and water they are the by products of this particular technology okay working this fuel cells they work like batteries but they never run down or they need any recharge because simply as long as the fuel is there these batteries keep on working limitations first one is high cost obviously any new technology it will be very high cost at the launching stage but as the technology is more mature the cost will be lowered for example electric vehicles now the electric vehicles cost also will be stabilized at one point of time even you will be surprised the prices will be dropped as well in future lack of infrastructure it has to be there technical challenges initially they are common and the policy limitations we have to take care about these things in this context it is worthwhile to remind about national green hydrogen mission as well government of india introduced national green hydrogen mission in previous budget okay this is about targets for 2030 at least by 2030 product producing around 5 million metric tons of green hydrogen annual production 6200 gigawatt of electrolyzer capacity i mean that much electrolyzer we have to produce because electrolytes it will you know like uh, it helps in the production of green hydrogen and 125 gigawatt renewable energy capacity for green hydrogen generation and associated transmission network that means once the green hydrogen is generated it has to be transported to other places as well yeah that kind of transmission network we have to build if we achieve this in this process of this particular goals we can save around 1 lakh crore of imports money that much amount because we can reduce our crude oil imports and around 
million metric tons of carbon emissions we can reduce, around 6 lakh jobs we can create and around 8 lakh crore investment we can attract in this area. So, this, these are the some of the ambitious targets set in the National Green Hydrogen Mission. Yesterday's video question, which of the following is the intention behind launching Netra by ISRO that is about to safeguard its space assets from space debris. This is the main intention of the Netra. Now, let us see today's video question. Today's video question is consider the following statements. Green hydrogen is produced by burning hydrogen gas with coal releasing carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Statement 1. Second, National Green Hydrogen Mission aims to make India a global hub for production, usage and export of green hydrogen and its derivative. So, examine these two statements and pick the correct statement. Main's question. Hydrogen is being dubbed as an alternative fuel, of course. However, there are so many challenges associated with this technology. What are the challenges related to this green hydrogen mission? This is the main question. As we reach to the end of this video, in this particular video, we mainly discussed about hydrogen fuel cell powered ferry. Who developed this? Who designed this? And how this hydrogen fuel cell works? Apart from that, we also discussed about national green hydrogen mission as well. What are the advantage of this one? And what are the challenges related to this green fuel cell? So, this is a detailed discussion regarding the green, I mean, this hydrogen cell fuel based ferry service. Thanks for watching our video. Have a great day. Jai Hind.